Here we go, y'all. We are going live and we are coming in a little bit early tonight because I pushed the wrong button. I pushed the wrong button while I was talking to my wife on the phone. So we're just going to go with it. I've got a tremendous message tonight and let's just see uh, what the Holy Spirit is going to do. I, apparently, I couldn't wait to go live tonight. So we are live and um, we're rocking. We're rocking a minute early, so people are going to take their time probably uh, filing in here tonight, <laughs> but it's what happens sometimes, man. When you're fired up for God, you can't wait. You're chomping at the bit to get in here and do this thing, and uh, praise God. There's my wife right there laughing. We were talking. I'm like, yeah, I got a few minutes before I go live, and just I couldn't wait to get this sermon out to just, you know, and wow, let me tell you guys, I got to address so much. So many people have asked me these questions. I've been getting bombarded with questions and comments today and people sending me videos about Halloween. So we went over that the night before last. We went over that again last night. I know that people got different opinions on this subject, different Christians. There are people that I am going to disagree with that are going to also disagree with me. OK, and that's why I prefer this. What I, I'm going to tell you what I prefer. I like the way Elijah handled things. Okay, So before I get into the sermon tonight, I, I like the way Elijah handled things. Right. When he said, OK, you know, check it out. Y'all get up here and let's see what, you know, y'all got going on. And then I'll get up here and we'll see. You know what I mean? It's almost like you need to see a demonstration of the spirit of God and power. And it can't just be words, man, that you're scaring people with. You know what I mean? And um, I'm seeing that a little bit with some of this Halloween stuff. And I went over this and I'm trying to, you know, I'm going to reiterate that again now. You know, I like the way John G. Lake, he had a similar incident when the government sent the investigators out to Spokane, Washington. After he opened the healing rooms out there, they had 100,000 people miraculously healed in a five year period. Do a study, do a history study on it. The government sent investigators out there and then they didn't want to investigate it once they heard the testimonies. He said, y'all already out here now. You know what I mean? And just testimony after testimony after testimony. And then, you know, other instances where he would put five people up on the stage that have been given up for dead, terminally ill, and three of them would be instantly healed. You know, that type of stuff, you know. So I'm going to explain this a little bit just real quick again, OK, because there are so many people out here that are concerned about this, rightly so. Because I've been seeing some of these videos and some of these comments and messages coming from people that had good reputations. They have good reputations in the Christian community and they're scary. You know, they're saying, hey, if you let your kid dress up like this, they're going to get a demon in them. You know, that's what, you know, they're they're saying. And OK, so let's start from the beginning real quick. OK, here we go. Extraordinary Solitude Ministries should be up and running right now. Brent Hazen, I hope that it is. OK, real quick. Here we go. Who is Anton LaVey? So people are going to come in late right now. I see that because I came in a little bit early. So here we go, y'all. Who is Anton LaVey? Anton LaVey is the man that wrote the satanic, what they called the satanic Bible. He is the one that uh, some, some men that I, I respect, they're Christian men like John Ramirez and people like that are posting videos about. And they're saying that Anton LaVey said that the devil is happy. When at least everybody celebrates, all these children celebrate the devil and worship the devil at least one day out of the year. Okay, now, focus with me for a minute. Anton LaVey was a fraud. Okay, he was not even what you would consider to be a powerful spiritual devil worshiper. I read the book. I read it out loud with the devil worshiper. Y'all know the story. This dude was a fraud, man. Now, he had some people around him from time to time that was real. And when he died, he died in horror and couldn't believe that he was really going to hell because God opened his spiritual eyes at the last moment while he was somewhere getting high, doing whatever he was doing. But the man was, was a charlatan. You know what I mean? I'm going to give it to you like this. We all know people in our life or have met people in our life that dabble in selling drugs a little bit, right? Sometimes when a guy's at a low level, he likes for people to know that he's selling drugs. Big fancy watch, big fancy rings, puts the rims on his car, loud stereo. Come on. You need to know that I'm in the game. All right. 
But the guys that are behind the scenes that are really pulling the strings, the big dogs, the guys that are making the big money, that are flooding the streets with kilos and kilos and kilos of cocaine that those little guys that wear those gold watches and rings can't even get close to. They don't even know who they are. Those guys would never be flamboyant like that. He's going to wear an old pair of faded blue jeans with a hole in them, an old pickup truck that he might have to pull over the side of the road and put a little gas in the ga- in, the, in it. You know what I mean? You don't know who those type of people are. I had a silly. Check this out now. I'm talking about a stone cold cartel member from Colombia who was living in Mexico where they bought a giant ranch to land airplanes straight from Colombia full of thousands of pounds of cocaine on a weekly basis, on a weekly basis. And he pretended most of his life to be a poor farmer. That's what he pretended to be. He never acted like he who was who he really was. He wouldn't expose himself like that. And it's the same way, y'all, in this type of thing. Do you think that the most powerful satanic, demonic warlocks and witches and people of that nature that are involved in massive things in this country or throughout the world that involve the kingdom of darkness are just out in the open like that? I'm such and such and I'm this such and such? No. Maybe if you go to Haiti or someplace where it is out in the open like that, but in this country, no, 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 no. Them dudes are faking, man. Them dudes are faking. Okay? I know because I've been around them and I've been around the real ones, the real ones from Cuba or from Haiti or the Dominican Republic or uh, Central America. I've been around the real ones. And so guys like this guy, Anton LaVey, who's been dead now for a while, who wrote that book that's considered a satanic Bible, when he says that, he's not really an authority on that. All right? Just want to say that right away. I made a little video about him one time. Now, let's get into this thing. Guys saying out there, I'm not going to name some of these pastors. You letting your kids dress up like this or dress up like that. And they're doing a trick or treating in the Halloween. They're opening themselves up for spiritual and demonic attacks for demons to come on them. And I explained this last night. Do not let your kids dress up like demons. Do not let them put on cloaks like something that is a representative of the kingdom of darkness. Don't let your daughters dress up like witches. Don't let your your sons dress up like warlocks and demons and dead people and Jason and Freddy and all these nasty, horrible, terrible things. Don't do that. Just common sense would tell you not to do that from a spiritual perspective. Okay, we don't want we don't want fear. We want faith. We don't want anything representing fear or the kingdom of darkness. But if your daughter wants to dress up like a veterinarian. Or your son wants to put on a Tom Brady jersey and wear a football helmet. And go to grandma and grandpa's house and aunt and uncle's house and get some candy. It's all right, man. And this is where I get this is where it gets bad sometimes, man, because people take a little something like that, that they they know it's like it's going to be explosive. It's going to get everybody's attention. It's going to put a little fear in people and it's going to get them a lot of views or likes or exposure on television. And I'm just telling you, all I have never, ever casted out a demon that entered a person on Halloween because they were dressed a certain way. I personally have not. Normal exposure to demons where a demon can come into a person is through sex. Maybe they were sexually abused as a child. They've played with some form of the occult. They were involved in the occult at some point or they've played with some type of instrument that is trying to contact the spiritual realm outside the Lord Jesus. Those are really the main ways. Those are really, really the main ways. And and when I say a cult, that can also be clicking up in a gang and representing something of that nature, which would include like Freemasonry and things of that nature. Yes, demons can come in right through that. Maybe they were involved in a false religion as well. Okay, but, you know, I just think that this thing gets a little bit sideways sometimes, man. And I don't want people to be afraid because they're trying to make people be afraid. I want you to be aware. Okay, if your son comes home and says, man, for Halloween this year, I would like to dress up like an axe murderer. The answer would be, 
boy, you better go pick out a Tom Brady jersey or a Michael Jordan jersey or a stethoscope. Like you want to dress like a doctor or maybe you want to look like Abraham Lincoln or something. You're not coming, walking out of this house, going, walking. You're not wearing something like that ever that you're going to represent something from the kingdom of darkness. You want to dress like a witch or something like that? No, 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 of course not. Of course not. And are there some spiritual ramifications? There certainly could be. You know what I mean? But on the other end, on the other end, I want to tell you something right now. Now, that's a slippery slope. And some of the stuff that I've been seeing that's out there that people keep asking me about, you know, if we're going to go down that end, then we ain't getting together as a family on Christmas no more. And we ain't getting together on Easter no more either, ever. No. OK, I understand what this holiday represents. It is not even really a holiday. I understand what this day represents. And I know what it represents to demons and people that worship the devil. And I know what it represents to them. And they got no power on us. They got no power. We are covered in the blood of Jesus. Now, we're not opening no doors. And that's why I'm telling you, don't let your kids dress like devils and demons and anything that represents that. You know what I mean? Don't do that. But I heard a man today say, if, if you let your daughter dress up like this, she would have the spirit that's connected to that. And it was something weird. And I was like, oh, man, they're going to try to scare everybody. Are you really dealing with demons, brother, on a daily basis or five or six times a week? Are you? Because I've stared in the face of darkness. I know how they come in and how they don't. And this is a bad misteaching in the Christian church sometimes when they get off into deliverance ministry. Remember, middle of the road, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, crucified on the cross so that we could be forgiven for our sins, buried in the tomb, rose from the dead at the right hand of the Father. That's how we get born again. That's how we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, 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 right? But when a few people have experienced a little bit of spiritual power and they get into deliverance, the next thing you know, everything they see is a devil. And we've been over this. So I, I really hate to beat this back. We may have to do this one more time before Halloween. I believe we will because it's the Internet is flooded with this stuff. OK. Listen to me. We've been over this a few times and I'm just telling you, when they get off on that. Man looks at the secretary. She's got her skirt up a little bit higher today than she normally would. She's fashionably dressed. She's not asking for that attention, but maybe a little bit. She's got the stilettos on. And he's trying to work over there and he's like, whoo, and he goes and tells his pastor and his pastor says, brother, you got a spirit of lust. We need to cast that thing up out of you right now. You got a devil. We got to get it out of you. Brother, don't be foolish. Don't be foolish. This is called the flesh, the flesh. You are battling the flesh. And that's why we speak so much about water only fasting because it's your job to keep your flesh under subjection just because a man did something like that doesn't mean that he's got a demonic spirit of perversion in him now maybe he does maybe he's been doing something he ain't supposed to be doing like getting involved in pornography and stuff like that but if not he's got to get a hold of his flesh he's in the wrong was it a sin yeah he's got to get a hold of his flesh go before god say man i'm sorry man and get his flesh under control if that means fasting same way with a little bit of, uh, of uh, I guess what you would call covetedness, a little bit of greed, a little bit of stuff like that. Those are fleshly things that you have got. Scott, I am flat. I am fasting right now. Yes, I am. Um, those are things that you just got to get under control, because if not, you will fall off into a ditch on that side of the road and believe that every time you have a sinful thought, I got a devil. Everything that goes wrong, there's a demon attached. Not true. OK, I've been doing this for we've been doing deliverances almost every day now for about three, three and a half months. OK, and I would say probably 20 percent of the time there's nothing present there. I'll check. I'll check. You know, we don't have instances and my wife will tell you this. We don't have instances where I get on the phone and start pleading the blood of Jesus against a demon and taking authority over it in the name of Jesus and reminding it that it is a defeated foe. And that it cannot stand the blood of Jesus and reminding it who I am and letting it know that it knows who I am. And I began to tell it it will not remain hidden and come to the surface. We don't have cases where it doesn't come to the surface. They come to the surface. If if they're present, they're coming. There's something's happening. 
Because I stopped the interview at the three or four minute mark and I asked the person, what's going on over there? And when a demon's present, they let me know. They say something's going on with my body and I can't understand it right now. My, you know, whatever the case may be, I'm feeling things in my stomach. My skin's turning all red and stuff. I'm not sure what's going on. But, you know, I just something's going on. Yeah, that's what's going on. He's getting restless. He knows he's got to come out. He knows he's under attack. He knows who I am and I won't stop. And he can't stand the blood of Jesus because Jesus has the victory. When you pray for somebody like that and and you begin to pray for them like that and you do it a couple of times and they say, man, I'm telling you, I feel good. I say, I know it because the Holy Spirit has showed me, but I just got to check because we had a conversation like that earlier today. Where I mean, we're doing a deliverance on somebody's 2000 miles away from us. The person didn't have a demon. And you know why? Mm. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to share the sisters a little bit of this sister's testimony. I'm not going to tell you who she is, but she's an educated woman, middle class, right down the road, professional. And she was in here. She comes into our ministry almost every night. And she was dealing with a spirit of fear. Ever since her husband had passed, she had been dealing with a spirit of fear. They'd been together every day for 28 years. And we had a service like that in here. Y'all remember it probably three weeks ago where people were like, hey, you know, I'm having anxiety. I'm having fear. And then about five minutes later, somebody else would say, you know what? I'm suffering with that, too. And then somebody else. Once I get two or three confirmations like that, I know a demon, demonic present, principality is trying to send these little minions out to affect the church and what's going on in the church for sure, without question. And immediately I can stop the service and boom, go in and attack that spirit that's in everybody. It's like a mass deliverance. And she was one of the people that got delivered. And I had no idea. She never let me know. She never texted Kelly Grace. She never texted me. She never said anything like that until today. That's been weeks later. And she said, I want to let you know I got free on that day. I got absolutely free. 99.9% .9 of every fear that I ever had was gone. Instantly said she knew it when it left, said she even vomited a little bit. So I just want to, you know, point that out. We don't believe that everything under every rock or everything that causes every little sin is caused by a demonic spirit. The flesh, y'all, who are we warring against? You know, the world, the flesh and Satan. And a lot of what's in the New Testament talks about your flesh and keeping your flesh under control. That eye that wants to drift over there or wants to covet what somebody else has or wants to look at that very attractive person or, you know, whatever the case may be. Many times that's you. And it's like that. When Paul talked about that in Romans chapter seven, he wasn't saying and what I want to do, I can't do. And the things that I don't want to do, I do because I'm full of demons. That is not what he said, y'all. Go back and read it. That's not what he said. He said, I'm this sinful nature, man, it's my flesh. But we had the victory because of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes there's something demonic present. We're here for that. We deal with that without question. You know what I mean? We deal with that. We understand how that works. But I want everybody to rest assured because I don't want our church being in fear about this stupid day. This stupid Halloween day that comes around once a year. We're not living in fear. If your conscience is telling you, I'm not letting my children participate, don't do it. Remember that too. The Bible talks about that in the New Testament a lot. You know what I mean? If your conscience is, is bearing you witness and it's saying, nah, this ain't for you, don't do it. Do not do it. I'm not saying go do it. I'm saying, you know, I'm just giving you the facts on the situation. You know what I mean? And I've dealt with a lot of devils and a lot of demons and you know, recently been dealing with them um, all over the world. OK, and then I want to get into my sermon because we don't want to get it in Q&A every night, not early because we're going to preach the Holy Spirit. They give me a message. What if they don't dress up at all, Mia? Well, you could do that. But like Mia, I know Mia Barton. That's one of my daughters. And 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 I know um, her son. OK, and if he wants to dress up like a cowboy, I got no problem with that. If you want me to pray for him before he goes out that night, I do it. I will pray for him that night. If the little rascal wants to dress up like a doctor or whatever, you know, he feels good about, you know what I mean? I wouldn't let him dress up as anything that represents the kingdom of darkness and be very, very careful. Honestly, be careful with Walt Disney type characters, man. OK, I don't want to say a whole, whole lot about that. I don't know how connected Facebook is with Disney, but, you know, there's some stuff going on over there. It's not right. OK, it's not right. Just be mindful of that. That's the Holy Spirit right there. I'm telling you. OK, be mindful of that. All right. Yeah, I'll pray for him and I'll pray for uh, 
I'll pray for anybody else. You know what I mean? And here's another thing, too, that a lot of people probably don't realize. I have not only was I locked in cells with these devil worshipers, but if you know anything about me, you know that I'll interview somebody. I will interview somebody. Mm -hmm. I dig deep. I want to know what they're thinking. I want to know what the enemy's thinking all the time. And he don't want to let me know what he's thinking. And I want to know what he's thinking. I like to know. And if you locked in the cell with me 24 hours a day, seven days a week for months, I'm going to know. And it gave me some keen insight into how the enemy operates. How does Satan's kingdom operate on the earth right now? Without question. And this is dealing with people that were real devil worshipers from all different parts of the world. All different parts of the world. OK, so, you know, just want everybody to be um, rest in the fact that you belong to Jesus. And that I've taught you all how to pray. And if you're just coming in here for the first time, I want to continue to teach you how to pray, to plead the blood of Jesus Christ for protection over yourself and your family at all times. At all times, all doors closed, every portal into your soulless realm has got covered by the blood of Jesus and is closed and no enemy is entering you unless you let them into you. OK, once we get you cleaned out, you cleaned out. If you open the door after that, you open the door back up and it happens. OK, it absolutely happens. Joanna Hill received a baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we know it's going to happen. Joanna, it happens like that all the time. Virginia Taylor, our sister from the UK. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, so let me give you all what the Holy Spirit gave to me. Uh, that's interesting. Look at what Margaret said. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay, Mia. Okay, I want to address this right now. Listen, this right here, okay? Guys, I don't I don't like this. I do not like this, guys. I do not like um anything that has to do with superstition. Okay? Um man, oh man, oh man. I'm just going to address this. I'm going to put this in here right now. Here we go. Superstition is of the devil. And I'm going to post that. Superstition is of the devil. I don't care if it's an upside down horseshoe. I don't care if you're jumping over cracks on a sidewalk. If you don't believe you can walk underneath the ladder. If it's Friday the 13th. I don't care. Superstition is of the enemy. That is saying that this representation that is outside of the Lord Jesus Christ is an accurate representation. And it's something that you believe can harm you. And it cannot. I don't care if it's Friday the 13th and it's a full moon and there's upside down mirrors and crucifixes all over the place and ladders everywhere. And I got to walk underneath every single one of them. You do not do that. And here's why. Watch me now. The spirit of fear is one of the most powerful demonic spirits that there is. The spirit of fear is one of the most powerful demonic spirits that there is because fear is the opposite of faith. And if the enemy can get you operating in fear, he's won a mighty battle because your faith is sh shaken. Because you think that this day being cursed or whatever the world or society says it is, is more powerful than Jesus and God being able to cover you. And Mia, I'm not jumping on you right here, girl, because, you know, I love you to death. I'm just telling you, this is not good. Upside down horseshoe, rabbit's foot. That's my lucky color. All that garbage, garbage. Trust me. Oh, man. Whenever I see that right there, it's always bad. Garbage, <laughs> garbage. Don't even say stuff like that. Say I'm a child of the king covered in the blood of Jesus, man. Covered in the blood of Jesus. That's right. Now, right here. Sean Marie Nichols says Jesus is king. 
That's a fact. And I used to tell devil worshipers that when I would talk to him, you never had to convince a devil worshiper of the existence of God. They know he's real. They know the spiritual realm is real. But what I would have to tell them is that Jesus is the king of that realm. That is a fact in Jesus name. So I hope this is resonating with everybody, man. We ain't got no fear. We do not. We do not. Uh, yeah. At least no superstition. People in healthcare are extremely superstitious. Superstition is garbage and demonic. It's demonic. You know what I mean? No, 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 no. We don't get into all that. No, we don't get into all that. Uh, okay, so let me let me just get into what we're going to preach about tonight. All right, praise God. We're going, to, Darlene. Great to see you, Darlene. There's an amen right there. Okay, watch this here. The Lord put a scripture on my heart. It's on the bottom. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Very important. Somebody can drop this in here. Uh, it is Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs 23, 7. And this is extremely important. Extremely important. Okay. Now, remember, Proverbs was written almost what, a thousand years, something like that, based on historians before Jesus walked on the earth. Before God in the flesh was born on this earth from a virgin, Proverbs was written already. OK, now in the New Testament, it talks about your identity in Christ and it mentions being in Christ and Christ being in you. But here we are. And if you can think about how long this was before Jesus, I mean, we're going back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And it's right here from the Holy Spirit. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a woman thinks in her heart, so is she. What does that mean? I'm going to tell you what it means. Who are you? And if you can't answer that question, then you don't know. You need to do some examining of yourself. You need to do some examining of yourself and figure out exactly who you are. What is your identity? OK, and if who you want to be. Who you really want to be to society and to everybody else that you come in contact with is a representative of Jesus, then you've got to get in there and you've got to dig and you've got to get more of Jesus in you. You've got to make sure that you are cultivating that relationship and spending that time with God and in the word. OK, in your heart, if you're a kind person in your heart, you're going to be a kind person to people around you. And for the most part, people are going to be kind to you in return. If you're a wicked person in your heart, it's nearly impossible for you to be kind to people. If you're a small person in your heart and always thinking conniving thoughts and deceitful thoughts and, and things like that, it's very, very difficult, nearly impossible to be kind and good hearted and generous to others if those thoughts are in your heart. OK. It's a very important concept to get. OK, because it it is almost as if Jesus were saying a thousand years later that you will know them by their fruits. OK. Thorn bush is not going to bear good fruit. Right. So you need to be looking at that. Look inside. Look inside and say to yourself, am I in my heart? Do I think in my heart? The way that I want to represent myself and represent Jesus to the rest of the world. And if the answer to that is no. OK, if the answer to that is no, then there is a remedy for that. OK, and a lot of that remedy starts with spending time with God and spending time in his word and soaking that anointed alive word into your heart, changing your complete mindset and renewing your mind about who you are. And who you think you are and who you think you are. You know, a great confession for Melissa to say, for Anita to say, for Joanna and Jeffrey to say, a great confession. Because we're going to start doing a lot more confessions and decrees in this church every night. I'm going to start doing it every night. I'm going to walk you guys through them. And we'll quote scripture. We'll go straight out of the Bible. And sometimes we'll just go as the Holy Spirit allows us. You need to be making confessions about yourself on a daily basis, confessions that line up with the word of God, 
about who you are. Because as you do that, that reality will begin to sink in and you'll start to think about yourself differently in your heart. And why is this so important? It's because our church is made up of such a diverse group of people from all different walks of life, all different ages. We're split down the middle on the sexes. We're half men and half women now. Of the 350,000 followers, we're like 50-50. It's like 175,000 men, 175,000 women. And in our regular body of Christ here in the evening, we normally have a few more than this. We usually would have, it's a Friday night, so I can understand a lot of people out doing stuff. But usually it's 160, 170, and it'd be pretty evenly divided, men and women. So this is for the women that are in here as well as the men. It's not just as a man thinks in his heart. It's as a man or a woman thinks in her heart. So are they. And a confession that you need to start making is, I'm a powerful man of God. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm a man that's full of love and mercy and goodness. I am a man that is full of the Holy Spirit of God and power. Now, this is huge. And if you're a lady, you would replace the word man with woman. This is huge. And here's why. You are getting that down in your spirit. Faith comes by hearing. And you need to be saying these things out loud. You're not trying to trick your mind. This is not a mental game. This is about your heart. This is about your heart. When you are born the way that I was born, and my life wasn't worse. Many people had many worse stories in life than mine. Mine was bad, but there's always a worse one, okay? And you grow up, and the things that you hear are, you're worthless. You're stupid. You know that you know the lingo. You know how it goes. Um, you never hear "I love you." You don't hear those reassuring, reaffirming things that you can believe in your heart. Because if you were hearing in your heart, you're smart. We love you. You would start thinking in your heart, "I'm loved. I'm loved." And therefore, because I'm loved, I can reciprocate that and love others. You know what I mean? It's I'm telling you guys, this is something that Jesus put on my heart today, and it's just very, very important for our church to begin to do that. We have so many people in here that Jesus has you marked as someone with potential that you can't even see. You can't see it. The potential that you have for the kingdom of God to lead other peoples to Christ. To, to lead people to Jesus that you couldn't even imagine you could have a conversation with them. But you have got to see that about yourself, that you have that potential. You've got to tell yourself, I'm a good mama. I'm a good wife. I'm a loving wife. I'm a caring wife. I'm a patient wife. I'm slow to wrath and slow to anger. This is who I am. And the enemy might say, well, you've got a history of getting angry fast. If you've got a history of adultery and drug use, that's the old me. I'm a new creation in Christ. Who do I believe I am in my heart? In my heart, who do I believe I am? I believe I'm a good person. Why? Because I'm born again and I'm clean from all sins in the blood of Jesus. And these are important. Yes, I'm humble to my heart. Yes, you need to be confessing uh, these things on a daily basis and get them down in your heart and in your spirit. You can begin with, I'm more than a conqueror. Do you believe these things in your heart? You will. You will believe these things in your heart and you will thank them in your heart. And as you think in your heart, so are you. And the transformation will begin to take place. And as you are radiating love, it will bring that towards you. I mean, it's an interesting, interesting dynamic in the spiritual realm. You know, I've talked about this a lot. I can walk in a room um, full of pastors. These men have lived fairly clean, godly lives most of their life. And most of them are good men that care about God. Sure, they've got some hidden sin, but okay. Many people, most do, right? Almost everybody's got something going on weird that they need to get cleaned up at some point. Then they can walk in holiness for a while and then they'll stumble again. And if you know who you are in Christ, you come back and you ask for forgiveness and get right again. But I can walk in a room like that and I don't have to say anything. I don't have to say anything. You can just sit down and listen to the speaker. But I pay attention 
and people will begin to look, they know in the spiritual realm, something has shifted. Something has changed in this room. Something has changed in this room. Well, what's changed is a man just walked in here that's fasted for a couple months already this year. Or it plans to fast for probably three. <laughs> you know what I mean? What's happened is that somebody walks in here that believes that God can do anything and will do anything. Who's not scared to actually put those into action. I'm, I, I, you know, I don't want to be known ever, guys. And I don't want y'all to be thinking that you should be known as this. I, I don't want to be known as an inspirational speaker. I want to be known as a man that walks around that has dedicated his life and has fasted so much and counted the cost so much that God's power can flow freely through me to get children healed and to, and to cast demons out of folks. Not as a great inspirational speaker, man. He's awesome, man. I'm pumped up when he gets done talking. Well, that's good. That's part of preaching the word. But we need to see a demonstration of the spirit of God and power. Do not make me go to chapter two of Corinthians. Paul literally said that out of his own mouth. And that's where I want every one of y'all to go. I want every one of y'all to be there as well, because I'm telling you guys, Extraordinary Solitude Ministries is going to be a ministry because we're not brick and mortar. Watch this now. Because we're not brick and mortar, we are strictly online at this point, and we're reaching people throughout the world. Jesus is doing that. The Holy Spirit is doing that. Because we're not brick and mortar, it's going to be evolving, and things are going to be happening here real soon, and it's going to grow, and it's going to grow, and it's going to grow. And because we're not brick and mortar, Damon is going to have a house church in his home. Well, Damon looks at his life. Damon Frack looks at his life right now and said, man, come on, man. I wouldn't have like, yeah, you're going to have little Bible studies and prayer meetings in your house. Might start out with three or four people. Maybe in the first time that you do it, it's just you sitting there. Then maybe it's two people and then it's 15. Anita's going to have the same thing. Gina White's going to have the same thing. Like, what made you decide to do this? Well, I'm part of an online ministry called Extraordinary Solitude Ministries. And the pastor's there saying that the Holy Spirit is speaking to him and that and that the ministry is going to grow. And then this is one of the ways that it's going to grow. What's he teaching? Well, let me teach you. He's teaching power, unlimited power in the name of Jesus in the spiritual realm, power in the blood of Jesus, power over demons and sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. He preaches fasting, water only fasting and prayer and love and kindness and boldness in the things of God. And he gets a little crazy sometimes when things make him mad, but he's a pretty good man. And I'm going to teach y'all the same thing. Come on. I hope y'all say that about me. If y'all don't say that about me, <laughs> y'all better say every one of them things about me. Right. I'm telling you, you ain't got to say all that. I mean, you'll be teaching people how to pray. And we've already had some of that happening where some of the ladies in the church have prayed with people and. You know, one of the ladies, uh, I'm not supposed to say older lady, but the older lady, she got back to me through messenger. She's like, they wanted to know where did I learn how to pray like that? I believe that's one of the biggest compliments. That's a massive compliment that could be given to Cat D's or, or Amanda or Jeffrey Scott Ayers or Joanna or anybody. You know, where did you learn how to pray like that? What if our man Brad Huey goes in a church down there in Texas where he goes and people know he's a Christian man? And he goes into a setting, man, and they're wanting, you know, some prayer. And, you know, it's normal prayer. Everybody's going to kind of pray kind of normally, you know, Lord Jesus and do pretty normal prayer. And what if Brad starts praying like this? <clears throat> you know what I'm going to say, Brad? You better tell me to stop right now. What if Brad gets in there and starts praying like this? Jesus, we come to you right now. We come to your Father in Jesus' name. Forgive us for our sins and we forgive any that we have anything against. Now, right away at dinners, people's going to think that's a little unusual. And then he says, Lord, drop the fire on everybody at this table right now. I plead the blood of Jesus over everybody sitting here and over everybody in their family. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to surround them with angels and open their eyes in the spiritual realm, Lord Jesus, that they be aware of their status and their situation with you, Jesus, that they walk in boldness, in signs and wonders, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, hover around them and go in them, in Jesus' name. The Lord bless this food. Thank you, Lord, for this meal. Amen. But let me tell you something. 
that prayer right there took less than 60 seconds. And when I see a man pray for five or eight minutes over a bowl of food, it makes me think that's probably the only time he prayed all day. But you could say everything I said right there in 60 seconds. And if you really believe that God hears your prayers, you'd pray exactly like that. If you really believe that Jesus is hearing your prayers and that he is prepared to act on them, that's how you'd pray. That's how you'd pray. I promise you. I promise you. If people that are alive, if people that are alive right now knew what dead people know, There'd be a lot more Christians, right? I saw that somewhere and I thought about that and I said, boy, that's pretty good right there. I believe I can say it a little bit better, but I think you know what I mean. And if we really, really believe that Jesus is hearing our prayers and that the Holy Spirit's on the earth to do these things, to perform God's will, to give us the desires of our heart, we'd pray like that. We would pray with some energy and some fervor and it wouldn't be fake and it'd be for real. And we'd know that the Lord is hearing us. We would know that the Lord is hearing us. So that's where I'm going tonight. I want everybody to believe in their heart that they are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Because if you get born again and the enemy still has you convinced that you just a foul old stinking drug addict. You'll never elevate to the level that Jesus wants you. You will never elevate to that level in the spiritual realm where you belong. Your rightful inheritance as a child of God. So praise God in Jesus name. That's what the Lord gave me today. And I wanted to give that to y'all, you know, um, and I could probably preach on that for about an hour. Yeah, Brian Daly, you're absolutely correct. So I would like to pray for some folks right now for healing. We haven't done a lot of healing praying in a couple of days. I now, of course, I pray for y'all every morning. You know that, um, and I pray like those prayers are being heard. All right, just to let you know, um, just making sure that everybody knows you are getting prayed for um, every day. So, um, okay, I got a couple other little. Let me give a couple little testimonies real quick, and then I'm going to pray for healing for everybody. Lord Jesus, I pray, Holy Spirit, give us wisdom. Open the ears and enlighten our understanding, Lord Jesus, to the words, Lord, that you're speaking through me this evening. Open the hearts of everybody in Extraordinary Solitude Ministry so that they can just see the way that you're working in this ministry in so many lives. Brian Sanderson. Y'all know a little bit, Brian. Michael, I'm fixing to pray for you, brother. I promise you, I plead the blood of Jesus over you and your family right now. And I ask that God put truly godly men and women in your path and in your wife's path in Jesus name that you can respect people that you respect in Jesus name. I will, Joanna, I promise you, I want to I want to share this testimony real quick. Y'all, I know I jumped the gun on the praying a little bit. We still got some time. So, Brian, if y'all know his testimony a little bit. He was uh, in a bad way when God led him to Extraordinary Solitude Ministries. And Jesus saved his life through this ministry, literally. And he got completely delivered um, from demonic oppression. And he was borderline suicidal when he come in here. I mean, like, could have been within the next five minutes. And God just miraculously, you know, saved him and delivered him. And now... What Brian does is part of Extraordinary Solitude Ministries and and a branch of that is he asked me one day he was wanting to start maybe like doing a tithe or something. I said, brother, with the Bibles, just do that. Just do that because it was already on his heart to do it because so many people get born again um, in here that don't have a Bible. And so Brian did that. He took his own money and he ordered some Bibles. And I think he got about 40. I know they weren't really all that cheap. I, I just know they weren't. And so he's been mailing them out as people need them that absolutely have don't have access to a Bible to get born again. And he went to the post office today. OK, now, Brian, you over there in Ohio somewhere. It's Ohio or Michigan, somewhere like that. He's over that way. And he sent me a picture. He went in the post office. We actually did a phone call because he said phone call probably be a little better on this, but I could write it to you if you're busy. And I had a minute in there between doing some ministry stuff, praying for people. And I called him and it blessed me. He went in the post office to mail some Bibles to some people here in extraordinary solitude, Illinois. Brian's in Illinois. 
And where you at in Illinois, Brian? And so he went to the post office to mail out some Bibles. And the man behind the counter said, I knew you was coming in here today to mail some Bibles. That's what the man behind the counter said and pulled out his Bible, his own personal and started talking to Brian. Brian couldn't even mail the Bibles out because all the power went out in the post office and the generator didn't kick on. Computers were down. Everything was down. And here's Brian and the man behind the counter that said that he knew Brian was going to walk in there that day and mail those Bibles out who had no idea that Brian was mailing Bibles out to anybody or ever had. And they got into the word and the man started showing Brian why he knew. And he told Brian, look, you can't just mail these Bibles out. You got to spend more time in the word yourself. And Brian said, how do you know I'm not spending a lot of time in the word? And the man said, are you going to sit here and tell me that you are? And Brian said, nope. Jesus was in it, y'all. Jesus had revealed to a stranger in the post office that had no idea that Brian had a Bible ministry or that he was coming in to do that. And the man looked at Brian and said, I knew you was coming in here today to mail Bibles out. The Holy Spirit had spoke to him. Jesus is awesome. He knows no distance. He knows everything that you're doing. He knows every thought that you have and every thought that you are ever going to have. We can never be deceived about that. I had a talk earlier tonight with my brother about that. The Holy Spirit is everywhere all the time. All the time. He has revealed to me so many times in my life that he has seen the small good things that I've done that I thought went unnoticed. But you just do them because your character has been developed in God. That even when nobody sees it or knows it, you still do them. And every now and then, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you and show you, I saw that. I saw that. I got you. And I love you for doing that. When you thought that nobody else was going to see it. That's how much Jesus has radically changed many of us in here in Extraordinary Solitude Ministries. And I believe that's why this ministry is spreading so rapidly. Because those that were in Brian's life three months ago see this change and they're like what is going on brother you are lit up and you are a different person for the good but what is that well, it's jesus man so you got religious not at all didn't get religious at all i got the holy spirit man all my sins been washed away in the blood of jesus man yeah come on somebody in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Jolie Mans, I pray for you right now in Jesus name. I'm going to start praying for healing right now, y'all, because I've mentioned it and the requests are coming in. Jolene Mans, I plead the blood of Jesus over you right now. Lord Jesus, I ask you to heal her right now in Jesus name. Lord, reach down your healing hand and heal her right now, Lord, in your name, Lord Jesus, for your glory in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sean Anderson, I see your prayer. Sean, I need you to let me know what am I praying for? Amanda Ralph, I plead the blood of Jesus over you. I plead the blood of Jesus against all rheumatoid arthritis. I curse rheumatoid arthritis and I command it to leave your body and anybody else's body that it is in. I plead the blood of Jesus against you and I command you to flee from them now in Jesus name. Kelly Grace. I want to spend time with my son who's mentally ill, suffers from addiction. He asked me, can you bring me Snook, Mama? So will you please pray for him, please? My heart is breaking and praying for Brian Nix. Yes, yes, Brian. I plead the blood of Jesus over Brian Nix right now. Lord, heal Brian Nix right now, Lord Jesus. Reach down and heal his mind, Jesus. Jesus, you can do it. You can do it. Even if he was born like that, Lord Jesus, we know, Lord Jesus, that by your stripes, we are healed. You are the ultimate Jesus, the ultimate healer. You created the body, the nerves, the cells and everything in them, Lord. I'm just putting you in re remembrance, Lord. We know you know that. And I'm asking you right now, Lord Jesus, to reach down and heal Brian now. 
in your name, Lord Jesus. Reach down and heal Brian Nix right now. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, hover around him and go into his body and heal him right now, Lord, in your name, Lord Jesus, for your glory. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Armando, I'm praying for your son right now. Lord Jesus, heal him right now. Make his healing come speedily that his mouth is healed right now in Jesus' name. Michael Blaylock, brother, you ask me to pray for you. I would like you to tell me what you want prayer for, brother. Let's get specific. Now, you know, I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you, and I and I ask the Lord to reveal himself to you in a powerful way. I command every stronghold over your life to be demolished and destroyed now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'd love to get a little bit more specific. Sean Anderson, demonic attack and continued harassment. Well, you need to message me. Please message me on Messenger and we'll get into that. I plead the blood of Jesus over you and every single satanic force and every demon that's afflicting Sean Anderson. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against you and I command you to cease and desist in your operations right now in the name of Jesus. And you know you must obey me and you must stop right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Michael, you can't do it. It's too embarrassing for your wife. Hit me on Messenger, brother. Shoot me a message on Messenger, the back door through Extraordinary Solitude, and I will get back to you. We can open up some communication like that, and you and I can dig into it. I prefer to do it like that, any type of issues like that, in Jesus' name. Valerie York, I plead the blood of Jesus against any depressive thoughts that you may have. I command them to cease and desist right now in Jesus' name and be replaced with thoughts of joy in the name of Jesus. Okay, Aiden. Elton, I hate cancer. I hate cancer, Elton Keeney, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Pray with me, church, right now. I come against all cancer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I come against all cancer in Jesus name. I plead the blood of Jesus right now over Elton Keeney in Jesus name. Satan, you foul demonic spirit of cancer. You hear me? I curse that cancerous tumor and I command it to die. Every cancerous tumor that's in Elton Keeney, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against you and I curse you and I command you to die right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every foul demonic spirit that's in Elton Keeney, I'm speaking directly to you right now in the name of Jesus and I bind you in Jesus name and I command you to come up and come out right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus name, Jesus, 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 I plead the blood of Jesus against all cancerous tumors in Jesus name. I curse every cancerous tumor in any of the children of God that can hear my voice. And I command all cancers to dissolve and come to nothing and pass through their body in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Ryan Spencer, brother, you need to message me on messenger in Jesus name. So many folks are having mental. So I see a little pattern right here with attack against my mind. I'm having anxiety attack against my mind. So we're just going to pray for that right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Father, come to you, Father, in Jesus name. We come to you, Father, in Jesus name as a church right now. And we ask you, Father, in Jesus name, Lord, to please forgive us for our sins. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Everybody in the church right now, ask Jesus to wash you clean in his blood from any and all sins for yourself. Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins, Lord, in Jesus' name. And I forgive anyone that I have anything against in your name, Lord Jesus. In your name, Jesus, I release them. Any bitterness or resentment in my heart, Lord, I release them now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. I thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. And I forgive myself. Everybody out there say you forgive yourself right now. Jeremy Brown, forgive yourself. Everybody right now, forgive yourself right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for forgiving me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, we call on you now to set every person in the church free right now. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to protect me and my wife and my family as we get into this. And I ask you, Lord Jesus, to protect everyone at Extraordinary Solitude Ministries as we get into this right now in Jesus name. And you know what, y'all? I'm sick of anxiety. 
I'm sick of people saying they got anxiety because I know it's real and I know it's caused by a demonic spirit and I'm coming against it right now. Satan, you foul demonic spirit of anxiety that's in the children of God. You hear me right now? Every foul demonic spirit that is causing anxiety that can hear my voice, I take authority over you and I plead the blood of Jesus against you. You hear me, devils? You know exactly who I am, Satan. You know exactly who I am. You know you must obey me. I plead the blood of Jesus against you and you know you have to go. You hear me, devils? Every spirit that is causing causing anxiety in anyone that can hear my voice right now. You hear me, Satan? I'm speaking directly to you. You foul spirit causing anxiety, and I bind you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and I command you right now to come to the surface and come out of these children of God right now in the name of Jesus. You will not remain hidden. You will not remain hidden, you foul spirit of anxiety and fear. You will not remain hidden. I bind you. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against you, and I command you to come out of these children of God right now in the name of Jesus. You will obey me. You hear me, you foul spirit of anxiety. I'm speaking directly to you. You will not remain hidden. I'm speaking directly to you, anxiety, and all these children of God, you foul spirit of anxiety that can hear my voice right now. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against you, and I bind you in Jesus' name, and I command you to come to the surface and come out of these children of God right now in Jesus' name. You will come out right now in the name of Jesus. You will not remain hidden. You hear me? I take authority over you. You have foul demonic spirit of anxiety. I plead the blood against you. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. I plead the blood of Jesus against you. You cannot stand the blood. You will flee from every person in here's mind right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. I command you to go. I command every stronghold and every person that can hear my voice. Every person that can hear my voice. I command every stronghold in your soulless realm to be demolished and destroyed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command it to be destroyed right now. I command every generational curse over your life right now to be demolished and destroyed and broken right now in Jesus name. I plead the blood of Jesus over all generational curses. I take authority over anxiety and fear. Every demonic spirit, I'm speaking to you, ruler spirit of anxiety, I bind you in the name of Jesus and I command you to come out of these children of God right now in Jesus name. You will not remain hidden. You will come to the surface. You will come out of these children of God right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus against you, Satan. And I command you to leave this church right now. I command you to cease and desist in your operations against the minds of these Christians in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Holy Ghost, fire, fall. Holy Ghost, fire, fall on your church right now. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over everyone that can hear my voice for protection. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against you, Satan. Every foul demonic spirit that can hear my voice right now, I plead the blood of Jesus against you. And I command you to come out of these children of God right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus against depression. I plead the blood of Jesus against all foul demonic spirits that are causing depression. I speak directly to you right now. I curse you. I command you to come out of these children of God right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all, if we're going to get into this, I'm going to turn my air conditioner on. If we're going to do this, I'm not going to just sit here and sweat. Give me a second. Come on, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, Jesus. Jesus, 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 I hate the spirit of anxiety. You hear me, Satan? Every foul demonic spirit that is attaching itself, that is afflicting the minds of these children of God, I bind you in the name of Jesus, and I command you right now to loose these children of God now. I command you to come out of them. You hear me? You foul demonic spirit of anxiety, I plead the blood of Jesus against you. Every spirit, every demonic unclean spirit that is causing anxiety, ruler, demon first, I bind you in the name of Jesus, and I command you to come out of these children of God right now in Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The blood, the blood, the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus against you, Satan. I plead the blood of Jesus against you, Satan. I plead the blood of Jesus against you, Satan. I command you to come out right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 The blood, the blood, the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus against you, Satan. I plead the blood of Jesus against you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You hear me, you foul devils. Every demonic spirit. Every single demonic spirit that is afflicting these children of God right now, I plead the blood of Jesus against you and you cannot stand the blood and I won't stop. You hear me, devils? Every foul demonic spirit of fear, every spirit of anxiety that can hear my voice, I bind you in the name of Jesus and you must obey me. And I command you right now to come up and come out of these children of God now in the name of Jesus. You will come out now in the name of Jesus and you will not return. I command you to leave their houses right now in Jesus name. Hallelujah. The blood, the blood, the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus against you, Satan. I plead the blood of Jesus against you, Satan. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Here we go, y'all. Holy Ghost, fire, fall. Holy Ghost, fire, fall. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I could feel an angel in this room touching me on the left side of the top of my head right now. Jesus, Holy Ghost, fire, fall. Do it, Jesus. Do it now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 It's time for the church to get set free every right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, every foul demonic spirit that can hear my voice that is afflicting these children of God, I come against you in the name of Jesus. You hear me, devils? You know exactly who I am, a child of the Most High God. You hear me, Satan? Every foul demonic spirit that can hear my voice, I'm speaking directly to you, and I bind you in the name of Jesus, and I command you now to come up and come out of these children of God right now in Jesus' name. You will not remain hidden. You will come to the surface now, and you will come out of these children of God right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 The blood, the blood, the blood. I plead the blood of Jesus against you, Satan. Valerie York, it is not scary. We are people of faith, not of fear. We rebuke scary. We rebuke fear in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak faith words in Jesus name, in Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus. Hallelujah. Yep. That's right. I guarantee you that's happening. Hallelujah. I feel it. Holy Ghost fire fall on your church right now. Holy Ghost fire fall on these children of God right now. Holy Spirit hover around each and every one of them right now in Jesus name. Holy Spirit hover around each and every one of them right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit hover around them right now in Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. 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 Thank you Father. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Holy Ghost fire fall on your church right now. Holy Spirit, do it. Holy Spirit, do it now. Heal them now, Jesus. Do it now, Jesus. Do it now, Jesus. You are the healer. Jesus, you are the savior. Jesus, you are the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. Jesus, you are the deliverer, Lord Jesus. I'm calling on you now, Lord Jesus, to back up my words with the power of heaven. In your name, Jesus, for your glory. Satan, every foul demonic spirit that can hear my voice, Every foul demonic spirit that is blocking the finances of these children of God. Every foul demonic spirit that is causing anxiety. Every foul demonic spirit that's causing sickness. I'm speaking directly to you and I bind you in the name of Jesus. And I command you to come up and come out of these children of God right now in Jesus name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Lord Jesus, I ask you for to give these children of God clarity of mind. Peace, Lord. Give them peace in Jesus name. The peace that surpasses understanding. Holy Spirit, hover around each and every one of them right now in Jesus name. Everybody, I want you to say this with me right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Say this with me right now in Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Say this with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus Christ. Fill every area of my soulish realm. That was just vacated by Satan with your Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, fill every area of me with you, Jesus. Do it now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. I want everybody in here. Now, I'm, I'm telling you right now, you're going to do it. OK, I don't talk like that very often to the church. All right. Second Timothy, chapter one, verse seven. 
I would like to for somebody to type that out right now. Will somebody type that out right now? And I will put that on the screen right now. We're going to leave that there for the rest of the service. And you are going to memorize that scripture, y'all. You can memorize this one scripture. OK, you have not been given a spirit of fear, but you have been given a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And when the enemy comes in and tries to confuse you and give you thoughts of confusion and tell you you have anxiety and make you feel worried and make you feel nervous, that door is closed. That door is closed. And your confession, as we began tonight, as the Holy Spirit told me tonight to bring this up about as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Who are you in your heart? You are a woman of God. You are a man of God that has been given a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And whenever that happens, I want you to say, no, devil, I rebuke you in Jesus name. I plead the blood of Jesus against you because I've got a sound mind. Somebody type. I want somebody to type the whole scripture out. If you could do that, you could do it faster than I can do it. Give me a good version. I don't care if it's the amplified version. It could be the new King James version. Give me a nice, you know, version of of second Timothy one seven. Somebody do that for me in Jesus in Jesus name. Do it for me. I will post it. I need one volunteer, please. Mm. There it is. There's one right there. If we got another version, I mean, that is so easy right there, y'all. I need you to please memorize this one scripture. Memorize this scripture. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. He's not. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And your confession must be that. I don't care if you got to put this up on your refrigerator, put it up on the fridge, put it up on your mirror in the morning while you're brushing your teeth and combing your hair or shaving. Put it up there. I need you to do that, please, for me, because this constant door that is open in your life. And remember what Jesus said about the cares of the world. The cares of the world, that fear, that anxiety, that next dollar, all that, man, that will choke out the life of God in you. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Praise God. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind in Jesus name. In Jesus name. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus name. You know, y'all, I want to tell y'all something. Whenever the cares of this world will try to bother me, I remind myself of exactly who I am and of whose I am. Because I know who I belong to. And Jesse Lasande and Jessica Jacobson and Obe 304 and Michael Mayon and, and, and Kelly Grace and Brad Huey and everybody else that I'm missing your name right now. And Shannon Plum and Wendy Johnson and Love Dishman and, and Carolyn Mipsy and and man, come on, everybody, everybody in here. Valerie York, Rye Guy, Rhonda, Janetta Cox, and I'm just going up. You know who you belong to. What did Job say? Job said, I know my Redeemer lives. Yes, he said that. Mm. What did Paul say? I know. I know who it is that I belong to. Listen to me, Opal, Robin, Samuel, Eddie, as your pastor, Stephen, you know who you belong to. Jim Crack, you know. Janetta, you know who you belong to. Yes, Janetta, I got the chair today. It's sitting over there in the box. I haven't had a chance to put it together yet, but I'm going to. This be my last night on the couch, I hope. I got the chair over there. It's in the box. Listen, you know who you belong to, Rita Cross. You know who you are, Rita. You know who you belong to. You belong to Jesus, the king of the spiritual realm. And no demon in hell can withstand in the name of Jesus. No. 
No, they cannot. You know of whose you are. You know who you belong to, Jesus. So when that bill comes in and you say, man, how am I going to do this? Or, man, I'm not sure how this is going to go. Or this person for me? Or is this person against me? Or what are they saying about me over here? What? Man, I know who I belong to. Man, my daughter's sick. My grandbaby's sick. Who you belong to? I belong to Jesus. What are you going to do? I'm going to talk to him. Do you believe he hears you? Yes. Do you believe you can have the things you pray for? He said you can. Well, I reckon if he said I can, I should. Yeah. Well, then get in there and talk to him about it. Get in there and talk to him about it. I'm going to tell you a confirmation, an awesome, an awesome confirmation that I got from God today. Y'all know that I said yesterday I was going to fast for a day and a half. I thought about doing a just a dry fast because it's such a short fast for me. I thought about doing a dry fast with no water. And then I realized how much stuff I had to do today and how much talking that I was going to have to do today without any water. It was going to be almost impossible. OK, because I knew I had different things that I was going to need to talk to some people today. And um, so I ended up taking water, but I'm fasting. Because I want God's power to be able to flow through me when I go pray for a six-year-old girl tomorrow that lives in the city where I live, Peoria. Her grandfather asked me to come and pray for her, and I will do that. And I take it very seriously. This is not have a big breakfast, go pray for this six-year-old girl, and then go play around the golf. I'm not that kind of pastor. I'm not. I won't do it. And I don't, you know, I, somebody jumped on me earlier today on social media. One of my friends on Facebook, an elderly lady from my community is like, I don't think you should really be talking, you know, about pastors and their knowledge and what they don't do and what they do do. And I said, well, I, I respect your opinion. But if they got this information and they're not giving it to people, they are neglectful. <laughs> if you're a pastor and you're not taking your job serious and you won't fast. Before you go pray for a little girl that's suffering, you want to have a big breakfast, go pray for her and go play golf. I don't want to sit down and eat with you. That's just me. And maybe you don't want to sit down and eat with me. You probably don't. I, my brother reminded me earlier, I did do about 24 years in prison. So you probably don't want to sit down with me. I'm good with that. That's fine. But I want to give you this confirmation. So a person reached out to me that is in Extraordinary Solitude Ministries that I, you may see one comment a week from this person. If that. They reached out to me and said, hey, this is who I am. I'd never heard from him before. This is my phone number. And I need some prayer. Now, normally I don't respond to a request like that immediately. I don't allow people to drive me like that and just make me jump like that. Because if I did, I'd never get anything done. Because sometimes there might be 30 of them. And you just can't do it. And you get on there and somebody wants to give you their testimony. And you're like, bro. You can't give me your 45 minute testimony, man. I've got it. I'm going to be doing this all day with a bunch of people, but I want to hear it. I'm not being disrespectful. It's just crazy stuff's happening. Now I'm casting out demons and praying for sick. And I please give me the condensed version. Give me the five minute version of your testimony. One day we'll sit down maybe and have a cup of coffee. You can tell me the whole thing. But right now you need a prayer. And that's what I'm here to do. But I didn't respond to this person. I went on about my day, got the other things going that I needed to get going. I went back and looked at my phone about an hour later and the Holy Spirit said, call them. Had a zip code on there. I didn't even recognize. I called him. Just push call. He picked up. I said, brother, how are you? He said, I'm good, man. I said, tell me what's going on. And he started to tell me, well, my life's been, you know, pretty good about like this. I said, but tell me what, like right now, what's going on? What's going on right now? Because I know when I hear from the Holy Spirit. So we don't need to go through any of that other stuff or the fluff or anything like that. I'd love to get to know you better. I'd love to find you and hug you and hug your neck. But right now, I need you to tell me what's going on. And yo, let me tell you what he told me. He said, could you pray for my six-year-old daughter? This man is in another part of the United States. From the girl that I'm praying for tomorrow. That's not a coincidence. Two six-year-olds. Little girls. Back-to-back -back days. Same ages. I got the signal from the Holy Spirit. He said, I'm in this. I said, I already know. I already know you're in it. 
So tell me what it is, brother. He said, going to the doctor. It's not doing good. Blood work came back and it's not good. Okay. I'm worried and I'm scared. Don't worry about it. We own it. And I'm telling y'all right now, I did not even hesitate. And I believe this brother shocked. If he was in here right now, I'd like to hear his response because I don't play. I'm not. I mean, we know how real the spiritual realm is. It's realer than the natural realm. I, there's no reason to play. We get through everything. This is what God says. The Holy Spirit says, I'm in this particular instance right here. Stephen, I got you. You pray for her and release me into the situation and I'm going to deal with it. And that's where we go right there. And then the Lord showed me, you need to attack this like a devil. And this brother didn't even flinch. And I didn't even, I didn't pause or drop it back down into a lower gear. I went right in to start attacking it just like a devil. In a six-year-old girl, just attacking it just like a demon in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And it was awesome, man. And the Holy Spirit's power was present for, I mean, present. Now, at the end of all this, as I'm going to wind down and hang up the phone, I told the brother, I said, you know, it's going to be difficult tomorrow for me to pray for another six-year-old girl the same way that I just prayed for your daughter because her mama and daddy's going to be there. And I know they Christian-y type folks, you know, and uh, it might freak them out a little bit if I do that. And I don't care. If they didn't want me to do that, they shouldn't have asked me to come. Grandpa shouldn't have asked me. Daughter and, and father of this girl, they don't know me. But Grandpa knows me. And Grandpa knows that I wake up in the morning going like this. I can't wait to confront hell. Now, the first thing I do is I wake up with joy in my heart because I'm full of love and joy and peace. And I pray for our church. I plead the blood of Jesus over everybody in our church. And I pray that God protects all your families. You know, we do all that. And then I get to thinking. Bring them, Jesus. I'm your servant. I will count the cost. I will do it. Whatever the cost to get a child set free. To get someone healed. I will do it. In Jesus name, in Jesus name, I will do it. And we're going in there tomorrow. We're going in there tomorrow. We're going to ask Jesus to, uh, yeah, I love that, Rick. Let's do that. Everybody tomorrow, that's going to go down about noon central time. I'm supposed to be over there around noon. So uh, I'm imagining that we'll have to, you know, exchange a few pleasantries there at the beginning. And this is who I am, and this is who you are, and this is the daughter, and this is the problem. Fair enough. Um, yeah. I'm not going to ask permission because I know that I don't need, you know, I'm just, I'm just not. Now, I will ask permission if I, if I, get, you know, put some anointing oil on her head, I'll ask permission from the parents. Can I, can I just put my, I just want to just put my finger right here on her head. That's all I'm asking. If you'll let me do that. Just, I just want to right there. That's it. It's going down big. Come on, y'all. Here we go. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I have my prayer oil, too, right out here on my table, man. I have some prayer oil that I've been fasting and had it in my hand, just praying over, praying over. I sent it down to Texas with Brad Huey. And he made it down there and put it on his dog. But it's all good because that's what it's for. But that oil right there, that oil right there has got the thunder in it, man. Frankie Tucker, where you been, brother? I sent you a message on Messenger, man. Reach out to me. Let me know on Messenger how you're doing. Uganda, East Africa. Sister, great to see you, Caroline. Caroline, I think, are we friends on Facebook, Caroline? I think we might have become friends on Facebook. Sister over there in Uganda. You know, they had a revival break out in Uganda about 25 years ago. Real heavy. Didn't last a whole, whole long time, but it broke out over there. They started playing Christian music in the banks and everything. That's what the Spirit of God will do. What would that be like in America? What would it be like in America if you walked into Wells Fargo or Chase Bank or or whatever, your city bank or whatever, and you walked in there to make a deposit or withdrawal, 
and and you heard on the radio and somebody was singing, what a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my king. You would freak out. You would. Well, I know what we would do. We'd be like, man, that's my jam right there. We'd be like, that is my jam. Who is in here playing this? You know what I mean? Or whatever it was. It could be old Zach Williams, you know, or anything like that. Man, play it in the banks, bro. Play it in the grocery stores. You want to change? Come on. Or you're playing. You really don't want to change. You know when I realized that sometimes. <laughs> now, Rick, everybody knows, Rick. Now, you done crossed the line right there, Rick. Rick, you crossed the line. I'm going to tell you why. Because everybody in extraordinary solitude knows that I have a beautiful singing voice. Even my wife knows. Kelly Grace, please tell them. how. I mean, y'all heard her in here that day. She was so happy when I was talking about my singing voice in here that day. Y'all heard her over there in the background. She was tickled. She was tickled pink. But I was started talking about my singing voice. So, Rick, you can't really say that. At least I, I think that's why she was laughing that day. I don't know. She was laughing pretty good, though. No, I know. <laughs> she laughed. Yes, she did laugh, Joanna. Thank you, Joanna, for pointing that out. I tell you what, we do got. Uh, I know you did, Frankie. That's awesome. We do got a, a a really good humor church. We've got. Listen, we're like anybody. I'm gonna tell you right now. I can describe it like this. Our church body that we got here in Extraordinary Solitude Ministries, it's like any any human body, man. We got our scars, man. We got our scars, right? We got our little warts and stuff like that, man. And we got our scars and our wounds. And, you know, we have our moments. We have our moments. But we are led by the Holy Spirit. We know that Jesus is God in the flesh. We know that he is at the right hand of the father right now and that he sent the Holy Spirit back down to live in us. We know that we have joy. We had, do not have an artificial joy in here. If I start singing and 140 people start laughing, the eight of y'all that ain't laughing, it might be you. If you're like, man, we ain't supposed to be laughing like that in church. Man, it's serious right now, man. 15 minutes ago, he's talking about casting out demons. But we can laugh when it's over. We can laugh when it's over because we know we got the victory. Without question, I walk away after casting out demons, whistling, and I don't care how bad it was. I don't care if the person puked their guts out three times, because at the end of it, when they say hallelujah, hallelujah, and they're free, or they're saying, man, I can't even believe this is real. This is crazy. This is real. It makes me happy to see that brother or sister get free, because I know the course of their life just went just like that. And now they're getting fooled, the Holy Spirit of God, in Jesus' name. Oh, God is on fire for Jesus again? Come on, man. Man, come on. Hallelujah. We've got a few people in here from Africa tonight. Nawira is over there in Africa. Nawira Gachango. And we got Carolyn's over there in Africa. Gary Meyer, he's in South Africa. Now, I've never been able to get in touch with Gary but this sister right here just became my friend on Facebook. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm, both of y'all might be my friends on Facebook now. But, uh, yeah, we cry with people, Linda. We cry and laugh. Linda, when I need to be encouraged, Linda encourages me. Sally's over there in Australia. Man, what are you going to pray for me for, Rick? For my singing voice? Boy, that Rick Armstrong's got a lot of jokes. He, Rick's a pretty funny guy. I'm going to get you, Rick. I am going to get you one day. I promise you, we're going to make a T-shirt for you. i tell you what, Rick thought that was awesome that day when I said, Rick, Rick the Hammer. And then he sent me his logo for one of his companies, and it's a hammer. He said, how did you know? I just, he's just the Holy Spirit, man. He'll give it to you now. The Holy Spirit will. What's up with Frankie Tucker? We'll pray for Frankie right now. Yeah, thank you, Rick. I definitely need that. Oh, you want to pray now? Frankie, I need you to reach out to me, Frankie, on Messenger, man. Because I got to. Well, brother, I understand that, man. It's OK. Frankie, I'm going to tell you what, man, that's the response of a lot of people. How are you going to trust a convict? How are you going to trust somebody who's in prison for 20 years, did all type of bad things in their previous life? I mean, how are you going to do that, man? Well. 
I mean, Jesus don't care, bro. How you gonna trust Paul? That brother went in, that brother was in about five or six different prisons. We know Peter was in prison. You know, Peter was a pretty violent dude, man. He cut a dude's ear off one day after he was told not to do it. Did it anyway. Disobeyed God. I'm doing it. Yeah, brother Frankie. I mean, and I understand where she's coming from, man. You know, we had, uh, we've had stuff like that, you know what I mean? And that's just part of it, man. It's just part of it. And I wish that she could listen to it, or maybe she does listen to it sometimes because I would tell her sister, I understand. I would want to vet somebody like me too, that was pouring into your husband's life. But I promise you the things that I'm telling him are right here. And the things I preached are in this Bible. And I would never tell that man anything that would to hurt him or hurt you or hurt your family. Never. And and Frankie, please tell your wife that we have a women's ministry called Women of Extraordinary Solitude. OK, and I don't know how many of those women in there are convicted felons. There might be a few sprinkled in there. I'll, as a matter of fact, I know there is. OK, but I would say the vast majority of them are not convicted felons. My wife's not a convicted felon. At least I don't think she is. Now, I, now you got me thinking, Frankie, where I feel like I need to do a criminal background check on my wife because I'm not now I'm doubting what kind of ministry we do got here now. No, I'm not, Frankie. I'm teasing, man. Yeah. Tell her that, man. I would love I would love for her to be able to get in there, Frankie, because you know what happens sometimes? And this is kind of wild, man. When you have a heart to heart with a policeman, or a heart to heart with a correctional officer. And I know we got some correctional officers in here, former correctional officers in here. TC, you in here tonight? I don't know if TC's in here tonight, but we've got another sister also uh, that Kelly Grace and I had a conversation with the other day. She retired from the Federal Bureau of Prisons. Now, she wasn't a correctional officer, but she worked in there. And uh, we've got correctional officers, uh, policemen. I was on a podcast with a federal judge. And one of the things that they'll tell you if they're being candid and truthful, they'll say, look, maybe I wasn't as bad as you was. But the only reason that I'm not over there where you're at wearing orange right now, because I didn't get caught. I didn't get caught, man. I didn't get caught when me and my buddies made that drug run. I didn't get caught when I had that DUI and I did this and did that. And you know what I mean? I got a pass because I had some certain privileges because of my race or my my wealth or my status or whatever. Or maybe, you know what I mean? I got a pass because I just got away. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I would pray, man. I'll pray for her, brother, because that's very important. I don't want you to have any friction in your home because of me. You know what I mean? But Jesus did kind of talk about that a little bit. And he said it would be like that sometimes. Where husband would be against wife and brother against sister and stuff like that. But don't make it because of uh, don't make it because of me. You know what I mean? Because I'm just going to pour into you what the Holy Spirit gives me, man. I want you to be absolutely blessed. And yeah, that's right. Margaret Ryan, you you are preaching. Sister, that's a sermon right there. That is a sermon. Yeah. And I and I appreciate that, Margaret. I, I really appreciate that, Margaret. That's beautiful right there. And thank you for saying that. You know, um, thank you for saying that. You know, I really appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. Um, sometimes wives can be a little bit like that. You know what I mean? Because she's protective over you, Frankie. She said, man, you really going to get into some type of an arrangement with this dude or take some spiritual advisement from this dude. And, you know, maybe you can tell her what you've experienced with me uh, or maybe you could kind of tell her about my life a little bit. Or she could maybe listen to some podcasts that I've been on um, or some television programs that I've been on, because sometimes those type of people that have those television programs or that have those podcasts, especially when they're a little bit bigger ones, they try to protect their audience. They guard their audience. They want to know who it is that they're bringing on there and what they're going to say and what they're all about. They do want to know that. And then after the interview, them interviews ain't live. 
they go through and they edit everything and they vet you, they vet you. And I've got acknowledgments in my book from people that have degrees from Oral Roberts University, one of the most prestigious Christian colleges in this country, um, from, from the number one podcast on Spotify, Men's Christian Podcast. Um, and if I could read to you, maybe it would help her if she could see what these people are saying about me. Because of the relationship that we have here and we're on social media and people can say they're anybody or do anything. But if I was to read to you what these people that have had pretty long term relationships with me are saying that I've talked to for hours and hours and hours and hours on the phone and just dug in there um, or have sat next to them and, and, you know, worshiped God and prayed and and, you know, all that type of stuff. If I told you. Well, matter of fact, I'm going to read a little bit. Everybody just hold on. I think y'all like this. It's just a little excerpt of some acknowledgments in my book from people that are, you know, this might help. So, and the book is not ready yet, y'all. It's not ready for sale or anything like that. We're getting her ready. I promise you, we're getting her ready. All right. It's happening. I mean, I have a sample right here and it's happening. I have a sample. This is a this is us. This is extraordinary solitude. I mean, it's the real deal. This book is going to change a lot of people's lives, a lot of people's lives, because I've let people read this that have written multiple Christian books. And they said there is nothing else out there that we've ever seen that's like this. Because it's not just a testimony. I'm not just telling people how God changed my life. I'm telling them how to tap into the supernatural and get delivered from demons and receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. All that's in here. I'm talking about is Holy Ghost fire. Jesus is happy with it. Okay. So I want to read one right now. This is from Dr. Joe Martin. OK, if you guys don't know Dr. Joe Martin, he has a big podcast that is geared towards Christian men. It is called Real Men Connect. It's the number one Christian men's podcast on Apple Podcasts. OK, I was a guest on his show about a year ago before we ever uh, created Extraordinary Solitude Ministries. I'd been out of prison when I met uh, Dr. Joe, probably. Six months, eight months, maybe we did an interview, a long interview. We dug deep. And Dr. Joe said, as a podcast host, I've interviewed over 700 guests on my show. So I know every man has a unique story. But then there are certain men whose stories test, challenge and strengthen others faith. That's Stephen Snook. If he wasn't alive to tell his story, no one would ever believe it. I'm thrilled that he decided to write this book so others could understand the true power of God and his divine purpose and his plan for our lives. That was the podcast host. And I'm going to tell you why he said that, y'all. Listen to me now. 130 people don't go nowhere because this is wild. We're doing a podcast interview. We've never met in the flesh. This man's from Tennessee. I'm from Illinois. He's a black dude. I'm a white dude. Not that that matters. He don't know me. We're doing this interview. He just knows about me. And halfway through the interview, the Holy Ghost falls in the interview in his studio in Tennessee. And I'm sitting here in my front room just like I am right now. And the Holy Ghost falls in his studio and he has to stop the interview this don't happen guys this don't happen this these guys are pros this is a professional podcast interview they've got it all they've got everything set up it there it's the real deal his podcast they make they do good they do really good he's on the road right now he's got speaking engagements booked up till whenever the holy ghost fell in his studio and he had to stop the interview in the middle of the episode 
He left some of it in there. He couldn't get himself composed. The Holy Ghost fell on him. That's when God is verifying, look, this is my guy. This guy right here, this is my guy. You know, and when he starts giving people dreams about you, Frankie, and please tell your wife that this has happened on multiple occasions. And I know uh, she's probably thinking, well, anybody could say that. God gave my parole officer a dream about me. She didn't wait 18. She didn't wait 12 hours. She didn't wait 12 hours after she had that dream to call me. And give me a directive. You need to come down to my office now. Now, to the federal building, that's where they put you in jail, dog. She sat me down in the chair. She told me, she said, you ain't in trouble. I said, all right, because they always tell you that. That's how they get you down there. And then the marshals put the cuffs on you and take you to jail. This woman's going into Tent City. She sat me down in the chair and talked to me for 90 minutes straight. And opened up like this. I went home last night and prayed. And in the middle of the night, I had a dream. And God gave me a dream about you. And that's why you're sitting in here right now. And I'm not going to reveal everything that was said in that meeting. But it was all awesome and powerful. Awesome and powerful. And I'm a career offender, major drug trafficker that has 10 years of parole and has only been out for about a year and a half and got permission to fly to California. Jesus is in this. We're casting out demons all over the world, brother. Frankie, okay, I understand you've been in jail a lot. Listen to this one right here. This is from the lady who went to Oral Roberts. Her daughter is currently a professor at, at Oral Roberts University, and she is still involved very heavily in ministry. This lady right here that I'm going to read her quote, okay, and then I'll, I'll close this part out and just giving you all a little bit of information. I want Frankie, I, I wish Frankie could call this old lady in there, and, and she I ain't supposed to say old lady. I'm sorry about that. Lord, forgive me for my sins. Wash me clean. Women of extraordinary solitude, please do not. Please do not get mad at me for saying that. That's old habit. Now, and I never really did it, but I heard old men do it when I was a kid. And just that's kind of rubbed off. So, gentlemen, don't say that. Okay. And this is what she said. And this lady knows me good. She knows me good. All right. She said, it's been said that the most powerful way to put ideas into the world is through a story. Stephen's story shouts to the world, there's a kind God in heaven who never stops pursuing his sons and daughters. And reminds us that Jesus himself stepped into prison cells and freed the captives from the inside out. The story of redemption and meeting out of brokenness and suffering washes into every chapter. Hope is embodied within each recounting of the impossible being not only possible, but a lived in reality. If you have ever wondered if God still performs miracles, if transformation and restoration are true, open the pages of this book and find yourself immersed in a story that will forever carry an impact and very possibly settle the wondering within your heart. This story is the story of the gospel in our day. This woman is a speaker, a producer, she's extremely well-respected, works at one of the largest churches in the United States, right down the road from Brad Huey's house, and teaches pastors all over the United States. They call her in, they fly her in, she has conferences, and she teaches the executive staff inside these other churches because she's been doing this her whole life since she graduated out of college. So, and not that, and, and, and I'm not saying that, here's the thing, not that I need man to testify of me or a person to testify of me, right? Don't believe because of the things that I say, believe it for the works sake, man. 
Because I'll tell you something right now, and I mean this. And I give you my word on this extraordinary solitude ministries. I promise you, this is me. If there ever comes a time that all I am is a good storyteller, I'll walk away. I'll walk away. If it happens and people are like, boy, you're a great storyteller. You're a really good storyteller. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. I believe Jesus said, give me a gift for that. I appreciate that. But if that ever becomes all that it is, let's go listen to Pastor Stephen tell stories. I'll go do something else, man. I will go do something else. Whatever Jesus wants me to do is what I'll do. And if that means going and living up on a mountain in a cave with my wife, I hope she's up for that. Because it'll be me and Kelly Grace and our little pug named Fern. If you haven't seen Fern, I put a video on Extraordinary Solitude Facebook page today of Fern. Fern is the boss. Fern is the boss. And uh, and you got to see Fern. When Kelly goes to go through them horse stables to feed the horses, Fern goes up and beats on every door and lets the horses know, get up, the carrots are coming. And she's an eight-month-old uh, pug. And it'd be me and Kelly Grace and the fern living in a cave up on top of a mountain somewhere. I mean, you know, you understand what I'm saying? I'm just, I mean, I know I'm playing, but the power of God's got to be there because I told the Lord, I told the Lord six and a half years ago, I'll preach the gospel because I knew that's what he wanted me to do. He was letting me know. I said, I will preach the gospel. I will preach your gospel, Jesus. It's your gospel. But you have got to be there confirming the word with signs and wonders following. You've got to be there confirming the words with signs and wonders following, Lord. And he said, I'll do it. And I said, I'll do it. And that's where we are right now. And that's where we are. And we're making a difference in the world. This ministry, Extraordinary Solitude Ministries, is Malloy Wright, reach out to me. Reach out to me, Malloy. I see what you're saying. Reach out to me on Messenger. We're making a difference. The tent city that was in our town, the homeless encampment, it's got flowers planted in it now. It's gone. We've got stories, many, many, many testimonies of people getting delivered. Testimonies are coming in um, of people getting healed. It's incredible what God's doing. Just the beginning. Just the beginning in Jesus' name. We will see you tomorrow, sister from Africa. I wish I could pronounce your name, sister. I don't know how. It is Nawira G. Gachango, and she is in Uganda. No, you're not in Uganda. Are you, sister? Where are you at? God bless you, sister. Thank you for tuning in. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Kenya. That's right, sister. I apologize. You're in Kenya and our other sisters in Uganda. And then we have another brother that's over there in South Africa. And uh, and soon. Now, it's been said to me, and I, I'm, I'm telling you right now. People can say things. But the person that told me this is the person of their word. They have never broken their word to me. They're a person of their word. And I know Jesus is in it. And our ministry is going to be having videos uh, and bringing people in here to the live stream through those videos, through the reels and through the shorts. And those things are getting ready to be distributed all over the world. It's, it's you know, God is putting this thing together and he's putting the pieces um Putting these pieces into place. Putting these pieces into place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, y'all. I want to pray for everybody. Um, Jeff, I appreciate that, brother. But Jesus is incredible. Jesus is incredible. And I am my heart's desire. And I'm looking for the day. 
when all of you, I mean, I've got to get everyone in here equipped. Your son is in ICU. Vangela, I'll pray for your son right now in Jesus name and open heart surgery on Monday. OK, let's go right now. Everyone, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Financial support. Oh, oh, don't we don't we're not going to come in here with that. Now you want prayer for your son for healing. We plead the blood of Jesus over him right now in Jesus name. We plead the blood of Jesus over him right now. Lord Jesus, heal him right now. Where he's at in Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. OK, I'm going to pray over everybody right now. Lord Jesus, bless your children. Bless Extraordinary Solitude Ministries, everybody that's in this ministry, Lord Jesus, protect them. I plead your precious protective blood over them right now, Lord Jesus. And I ask you, Lord, to put angels around them, Lord, everywhere they go, Lord, everywhere their children go and their grandchildren go. Lord Jesus, put angels around them right now, Lord, in Jesus name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all be praying for me. Rick Rick said he wanted the church to pray for me, um, and I would like that. Hey, Rick. Rick Armstrong. I know it, but my back is rough, rough in Jesus' name. Rick the Hammer, did you take off? <laughs> There he is. Rick, Rick had a, a request earlier, and he said that he would like the church to uh, pray for me for tomorrow. I would like everybody to just be mindful. Um, you know, tomorrow about 12 o'clock, I did get the chair, uh, Shannon. I'm going to set it up. That's why we're going to get off the air. My back is not happy right now. Um, but I would like that. If we could all do that right now, everybody just, well, you know, just pray for me to have strength and always be praying protection over me. Um, I appreciate it if you do that. You know, please be praying protection over me as I go in and do these things. It's very important. I never knew how important it was and the Lord revealed it to me. You know, Stephen, you're not a one man show. Don't you ever think that? And I said, no, Lord, I wouldn't. You need people praying for you. Why? Because I said so. <laughs> All right, you're the boss. Okay. So specifically a couple months ago, he told me you need men praying for you right now. Because so many Christian women were holding me up in prayer. They were holding me up in prayer, and I had to get some men on a team, man, to pray for me. So yeah, praise God. I said, You the boss. He said, Man, y'all pray for me. So thank you, Rita. I appreciate that. And I love everybody. If everybody can say good night, I will get out of here. And stretch my back out and then try to get on the floor and put this. I want to say uh, my brother showed up in here tonight. Chopper, are you still in here? He might have went to bed. My brother Chopper was in here earlier tonight. Um, I saw him stop by and um, he just made a couple comments in here. I don't know if he's still in here. He doesn't come by often because he works a lot. He works. He might work 14 hours a day sometimes. I'm not kidding you. He's a machine and uh, he does hard, hard manual labor. And um, there he is right there. And my brother is a born again Christian. He gave his life to Jesus right here, sitting on my couch, probably five, six months ago. There's my other brother. Look at there. We got my brother Robert up there. And then we got my other brother LJ up there. And I want y'all to do something right now. There's my brother Robert right there. We got 120 people and 5,000 people going to see this thing. There's my brother Robert. And there's my brother LJ. And I want y'all to pray right now that these two knuckleheads will get together and have a conversation this weekend. I ain't going into details, but I've had about enough of it, boys. Now, you know, we're brothers and brothers will do that from time to time. We get into it a little bit. I want everybody to pray right now. Come on. Yep. Let's pray right now. Right now, we're going to pray. Father, we come to you, Father, in Jesus name. And we ask you, Father, to please forgive us for our sins, Lord. And we're asking you, Lord, to please bring peace and repair all relationships, Lord, all family relationships, Lord. Just just give forgiveness into each person's heart, Lord, that they forgive the other, Lord. This life is too short. This life on this earth is too short, Lord. Let them forgive each other, Lord, and hug each other. And I'm talking about everybody in Extraordinary Solitude Ministries, not just my brothers and my family. But everybody, reach out to that loved one that you have not talked to in a while. That they were totally wrong. 
They were wrong and you were right. And I want you to reach out to them. And I want you to forgive them. And I want you to ask them to forgive you. Because I guarantee you, throughout the whole thing, you did maybe just a little something wrong. So ask them to forgive you and make amends in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Gary from South Africa, brother. Great to see you. We're signing off. Everybody, if we could do good night. Good night. Everybody be blessed. And uh, praise God. Absolutely, James. You know, I always get to every... Patrick, you still ain't figured out how to send me a friend request, Patrick. You know I don't know how to do it, brother. Oh, boy. Praise God. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Lisa, good night. Linda, Mallory, good night. Uh, Michael, good night. Barbara, Opal, Shannon, Jonathan, good night. Kelly Grace, I'll be calling you soon. Jim Crack, good night, brother. Amanda and Jennifer and Michael Monzon and uh, Rick with the jokes and Sean and Patrick and Christine and Lori and Michael and Elise, good night. Scott, Eddie, Jeff, Dwight Morgan, great to see all of y'all. Sally, praise God. Sebastian, uh, Patricia, great to see you again. Uh, Jonathan and Terry, Tim, Howard, great to see you, Tim. We're going to connect, I promise you. Sally, uh, Holcomb, Anita, Rita, Wendy, Mallory, and anybody else that I met. I know the other sister was in here earlier. Lilani, where you at, Lilani? I ain't missed you. Jonathan and Mary and Al Morris, great to see you, brother Al. And James, and Patrick, uh, Samuel Settle, great to see you. Adios, amigos. Uh, uh, Ronald Steele, great to see you, brother. Good night, Trevor. And Robert, my brother, Chopper, Tina Gregory, great to see you. And praise God, Janetta Cox, great to see you, sister. Margaret Ryan, love you, sis, and we'll see you soon. Nora Crail, um, man, just good night. Great to see you. Nicholas, great to see you, brother. Praise God. Everybody, we're lifting Sylvia up in prayer. Lord Jesus, heal Sylvia. And right now, Ryan Spencer, great to see you. Michael, great to see you in Jesus' name. I know we didn't go quite two hours tonight, y'all. Brenda Fox, great to see you. It'll be available to watch in just a few minutes. Um, I'll put it up there as soon as we get done. I'll put it up there tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Central, every night. I posted a couple reels earlier today. If you go in there and you like them, comment on them, share them. I even showed the family dog. Um, LJ said we're good. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. And uh, we're going to delete that. Okay, y'all be blessed, Cat D's, and I will see y'all, Dizel, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Brenda Fox, I will see y'all tomorrow. Y'all be blessed. <laughs>